Hello, let's compare partial quantization with full quantization. Partial quantization uses the mother assumption of the theory that space and time are continuous. I recently presented a seminar to physicists and somebody asked, where can I find this theory in physics textbooks? The answer is everywhere. It's the use of real number algebra and calculus in classical physics, special and general relativity, quantum mechanics, and the standard model, which define the partial quantization era, an attempt to model all points in space and time. Indeed, this theory is presented as fact in conventional physics textbooks. It is the mother assumption of its piglets and leads to their problems or limitations. Some of these limitations might be viewed as side effects or adverse reactions of the conventional physics assumption of continuous space and time. One is contradictions, such as ignored observations and experiments. For example, scattering data showing a non-spherical proton shape is ignored as investigators continue to model and believe in a spherical proton. In addition, data analysis at Binary Mechanics Lab has debunked general relativity by showing the effect of object surface temperature in gravity effects using lunar laser ranging data and GRACE satellite data. Then we have dualities, the wave particle duality arises from inability to fully explain both sets of experiments, those appearing to show wave-like behavior and those said to show particle behavior. Another side effect of continuous space-time theory is paradoxes, including the twin paradox in special relativity and Schrodinger's cat in quantum mechanics. If there is not enough to worry about, then there is the magic side effect, namely the illusion that drawing a line illustrating position change in Newtonian mechanics actually explain how things move. Then we have miracles or impossible things such as an infinite number of infinitely small sensors and supercomputers at every point in space required to determine the value of various fields postulated by theoretical physicists. Another miracle are the infinite number of infinitely small inertial motion guidance devices required by general relativity. And physics classes usually require suspension of disbelief, as if you were watching a movie as a result, many questions are not allowed. Further, the quantum mechanic wave function collapse issue can introduce the egocentric idea that the math works only when we are not watching, making measurements. Let's look at a simple table of issues in the theory that space and time are continuous. For the velocity variable, we have both a lower and upper limit in measured vacuum light speed c. Two more secondary constants are listed, the elementary charge and Planck's action constant h, where lower and upper limits correspond to measurement error values. The inverse r squared laws for gravitational, electric, and other fields give finite values for distance r greater than zero, but infinite results at r equals zero, a clear indication that partial quantization is flawed theory. On the other hand, for important variables like pressure, temperature, energy, mass, and energy density, zero lower limits are recognized, but flawed theory allows infinite upper limits. Why is velocity the only variable with a real lower and upper limit range? Why no range for elementary charge E and action H? What is the rationale for the assumption that measured variables may have infinite upper limits? 
What does the supposed infinite upper limit on most variables imply regarding the quality of theories, or indeed the lack of useful theory? It is almost as if Satan said the values of C, E, and H are fundamental constants, not unexplained observation. The so-called Planck limits for length, time, and mass are based on three secondary constants, G, H, and C. Prior to binary mechanics, H and C were unexplained observations. The table shows the primary constants of binary mechanics, which are the basis for H and C. In summary, the Planck limits are a sort of magical mystery tour, credit to the Beatles, because they are merely combinations of unexplained observations, and there is no consistency. Many say that the laws of physics may not apply below the Planck length, but electrons, protons, and neutrons all are recognized particles, even though their mass is much less than the Planck mass. Go figure. Physics aims to explain how things work. But for decades, the microscopic mechanism of how things work has been hidden in plain sight. For motion in Newton's laws, drawing a line or a vector arrow from position r equals 0 to r equals 1 hides ignorance of how an object moves. In physics research, description of motion is only the first step. The end goal is knowing how things move. Luckily, the time development laws of binary mechanics provide a whole new level of detail about motion mechanisms. Next, consider particle interactions as shown in Feynman diagrams. Each vertex where lines meet hides the real physics at those crucial points. In contrast, binary mechanics presents the microscopic detail of what actually happens at these vertex points. Moreover, all possible particle interactions can be deduced from this analysis. Quantum chromodynamics, or QCD, attempts to model the protons as a set of interacting quarks and gluons. Computations are difficult, so a volume containing a 3D lattice of points is used. These simulations are known as lattice chromodynamics. This idea is illustrated in two dimensions in the figure, hiding in plain sight, so to speak, what is now known as primary length constant L in binary mechanics, and that space itself appears to have a lattice structure. Finally, the so-called fundamental constants, such as C, E, H, and alpha, are measured values with the status of unexplained observations. These values contain redundant information as shown by well-known expressions in physics texts. For example, with vacuum permittivity normalized, one may write alpha equals E squared over 2HC. This equation states that these so-called constant values are not independent, not fundamental, and indeed could not be fundamental. Think about that. Binary mechanics has successfully documented that these secondary constants, based on three primary constants, L, T, and M, perhaps ironically map directly to the base units of measurement used in physics. We have talked about some of the consequences of the theory that space and time are continuous. I call them adverse reactions, sort of comically, if you will, of partial quantization, as seen in this Sherlock Holmes meme. The injections worked, Watson, he says. Now this student will not question the theory that space and time are continuous. Now let's look at some consequences of full quantization. First, minimum length L, area and volume. An elementary volume, L cubed, can contain only zero or one things or units of stuff. If there could be more than one thing, their position would in effect partition and contradict the idea of an elementary volume. In sum, 
Space is a medium with structure. Second, let M, energy in kilograms, represent a thing. Binary mechanics says an elementary volume called a bit locus may contain something called a one state or nothing called a zero state, but does not tell us what a thing is. Abstract thinking required. Finally, the third thing, if something M moves from one elementary volume to an adjacent one where the displacement equals L, its velocity is finite. This position change occurs in one unit of time. Thus, velocity can only be zero or L divided by T, called bit velocity. In summary, full quantization defines primary constants for the units of measurement, M, L, and T, used in physics. There is one and only one set of values for the three primary constants, M, L, and T, which is consistent with the measured values for, as shown in the red boxes to the left, electron rest mass, vacuum light speed C, Planck's constant H, elementary charge E, and intrinsic electron magnetic moment. This is an amazing, even stunning result. Dad, why can't physicists explain how things work? We believe that space and time are continuous, son. I might add a key point to this comic meme. Namely, without full quantization, not only is major league progress in physics limited, in addition, such breakthrough progress is simply not possible. Whether or not I'm correct on this key point, a very important consequence of full quantization is the absence of adverse side effects. In binary mechanics, there are no known contradictions, dualities, paradoxes, uncertainties, magic miracles, and so forth. Instead, we may cite many benefits of full, complete quantum mechanics. Binary mechanics has been the clear winner in the major events or competition in what we might call the Physics Olympics. First, we have the century-long Physics Grand Championship race, which we won with first-ever derivation of basic constants from first principles. Next, we have the best system state representation of position and momentum simultaneously in the bit function. So the bit function defeats the quantum mechanic wave function two to one. And we have the best time development laws, which are the laws of how the system state develops or changes over time, how things move, in other words. The bit operations defeat both quantum electrodynamics and quantum chromodynamics. And then in the competition for the best methodological advance in particle physics, we have bit function analysis. Most parameters quantized. In that competition, space-time energy quantization has won the day. And finally, the best physical force mathematical definitions. We've talked about the weak force debacle has been exposed and how using particle interactions or assumed particle interactions to define forces lacks scientific merit. I hope you've enjoyed today's little discussion. Thank you very much for your time.